right, we are back with another great along video, which includes uh, footage from my footage pack. So if you've got that, then you can put the clip in your timeline and great along with me. Today we're working with this clip of a leaf. And my intention with this one was to choose to go from a simple shot or the simple uh, shot that it is to go to something that is a lot more uh, color separated. So I really wanted the leaf to stand out and get a lot darker and deeper background with some more color. So we can really make the contrast of the two colors and also just make the leaf stand out a lot more. Like this is a little bit more of a, a harder grade. And it's also a little sneak peek to some of my new techniques that I've implemented lately in my workflow. And that will be uh, a video on an advanced note tree soon in the future. A little bit different from what we're doing now, but most of the way it's how I grade now, uh, how I grade at the moment with my, uh, my own note tree. So without any further ado, let's just jump into Oh, and before we do that, uh, you can download the uh, power grade, the note tree that we're working with today. You can download that in the description below and along with a, a link to my footage pack. So that was just it. Let's jump into the Vincent Resolve. All right, so I've already imported my clip here to the timeline and I've also made a grade along that you can download. So if you don't know how that works, you have the different uh, grade alongs in the folder in the link down below. And you can simply just right click and click import, find where it is based. In my case, it is in here. And then make sure that you select it. I haven't renamed it in here yet, but it will be for you. And make sure that both the DPX and the DRX files are in the same folder. Click import, then you'll get something that looks like this one. And if I reset my note tree over here and I click apply grade instead, you'll see that we get the exact same note tree as I just had. And this is what we are working with today. I'm not going to go through how you build it yourself, but it is essentially from node one to node five it is just serial nodes here we have a layer node i'll get into a sec in a second why we have that and then we again after that have serial nodes from 8 to 12 and then from 12 and forward it's just an outside node and then another node in the end what we've done here is also we have the log to davinci white gamut so canon cinema gamut canon log free davinci white gamut and with the davinci intermediate we're turning it into that and then for our last node over here we are going from DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate, Interaction 9 and Gamma 2.4. Just so we're grading in that color space, that's how I prefer to do it to get the most out of all the colors and everything we have to work with. So with that said, let's jump straight into it. Now, the first thing we're gonna do and the thing you will see that is a little bit different here, not from, uh, that we're taking actually from the previous Grade Along video is the Bleach Bypass. But what we did then was trying to make a black and white. In this case, we're just going to use it to create some more contrast. And this is a technique that I've started using on a daily basis. So I really enjoy working with this and that's why I thought it's fun to include here as well. So what we're going to do is we have these two layer nodes that I've just called Bleach Bypass. We're going to click on the layer node here and go to composite and go down to overlay. Now it looks pretty terrible, it's way too dark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight these three notes, the layer mixer and the two notes here. And then we're going to make them into a compound note. I'm just quickly going to rename it. And what we're gonna do now is go to the gain and I'm just going to reduce it to 0.5. This makes it a lot better. So it's not so overwhelming and overdone, but it gives us a very nice base of contrast before we actually get into creating contrast. And I think it's a really cool starting point just to extract a little bit more. We could probably also have gone 0.75, but then it gets a little bit dark. So I think 0.5 is where we're gonna settle with it for this video. And this is what I usually do as well. So unless it's a really compromised or compressed footage clip that we're working with, this is usually what I do. I still want to add some contrast. So as we always do, I'm going to head into my tone curve here and I'm just going to adjust the highlights first. So I'm just going to drag that up a little bit to get those a little bit brighter. I think around here is good. And then I'm going to drag down my shadows as well. Something like this. I'm looking at the waveform at the same time, making sure nothing's clipping anywhere. And I want to move my highlights up a little bit more to create some emphasis on this leaf. And I think this looks pretty damn good. I'm going to head into my exposure and just want to turn up my exposure a little bit just to get a little bit more depth here and a little bit more information in the background and also a little bit more on the leaf here. 
I don't want to do more. This is pretty much what I wanted to do, the exposure. I think it was pretty good from the get-go. So uh, we are pretty set and the contrast we went more powerful on the, or we gave it a little bit more in the highlights. So we don't need to do as much in the exposure this time. The last node in our correction here is our balance node. So I'm going to go into my vector scope and I want to look for two things here. I want to make the leaf stand out a little bit more. So I know from grading my Canon clips a lot that adding a little bit of green is usually pretty good. And then I want to add a little bit of red as well, just to bring out a little bit more orange in the leaf here. So if I pull it up, you can see it just became a little bit brighter and a little bit more orange yellowish. And then I just want to make sure that my highlights up here are still white. So I'm looking at it here while I'm having the qualify on. I'm looking down here to see if it's in the middle. And it looks like it is pretty good. We can just try and adjust it ever so slightly. And I actually think that moving it slightly, slightly to the warmer side is a little bit better. So now it looks even better than it did before. It was a little bit blue and now it looks a little bit better. So that's all we're doing for our correction. Bleach bypass, contrast, exposure and balance. And we went from this to this in a matter of pretty quickly, I would say. So those were the techniques for our color correction. Now we want to move into our look. And what I want to do here is I want to add some more green into the background. So I'm going to start by adding two blue and then I'm going to add two green as well to see if that's good. It looks pretty okay for now. We might adjust it in a second. I'm going to remove one red to just emphasize it a little bit more. Then we're going to see if we can get the correct colors out of it by adjusting the gamma a little bit. So first I'm going to remove the two blue because I'm not interested in those. I am going to add one more red and then I'm going to first try and remove all the green and then I'm instead going to try and say remove 0 point, uh, 0 0.015 instead. And as I hoped, that just gives us a little bit more of that green flavor in the background as I wanted. So to just recap it, we are adding two blue, two green to the back, to the left, and then removing one red. It gives us that very green, blue, teal -ish color that we had before. Then I'm removing two in the gamma, two of the blue, and I'm removing 0 0.015. So 1.5 essentially in the green. I'm just adding one red back and that gives us this look that is pretty green in the background but we kind of keep our yellow orange tones here on the leaf without ruining them. So that was pretty much what I wanted to do for the look. I'm heading, in, I'm heading into the curves here and what I want to do is just make the leaf slightly more orange. So I'm just selecting all around my leaf here. I think my selection is pretty good. I'm just going to pull it a little bit more to the red side. Make sure my hue rotation stays zero. And then this node in here, I want to use to just push it a little bit to the more orange side. For this particular case, I like it to be a little bit more orange red rather than just the yellow that it had. I think it looks a little bit flat and not as flattering. So I think this is a bit better. And then I want to head into my hue uh, versus set here. And I just want to make sure that my sky up here is completely white. So I want to remove some of that blue tint here. I'm also going to see by just leaving my leaf alone, but dragging down on my greens here, it's going to try and take a little bit out of them. Not too much, but just a little bit. That might have been a little bit too much, but something like this. So it still looks natural and not too fake. And with these two super simple adjustments in the curves, we've gone from this to this. So the leaf really stands out in the colors here because we have a lot of contrast between the kind of orange red tones here and the greens here. For the saturation, we are going to apply the saturation that I also made a tutorial on not so long ago. I'm going to right click and I'm going to change my color space into HSL. And then I'm going to go to channels here and remove channel one and remove channel three. So we're only left with the middle channel, which is the in the hue saturation luminance, is the saturation. So this only controls the saturation. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in my saturation tutorial, and as Jim in the comments so correctly pointed out, is that you can actually use the tone curve here 
to adjust the temperature or the saturation as well. So you can really nitty gritty where you want to apply it. I usually still prefer to do it in the gamma here, just because I think I get a more nice and soft rollout of, out of it. But it's completely up to you if you want to use the tone curve or if you prefer to use the gamma like me. I'm just adding one in the gamma here and it just pops the saturation a little bit without making it too much. And that's exactly how I want it. The next node I've called contrast balance. And what this is, is when we go back into our curves, I'm going to the saturation versus luminance. I'm just gonna drag again on my leaf here to see where that lies. It lies around here. And what I like to do here is I wanna make a little bit more separation between the saturated colors. So the saturation here is essentially what I've selected here. I'm going to take it a little bit further and then just going to drag it up a little bit. That increases the luminance of the saturation. You can see that became brighter now. And then I'm going to take my first point here, which is the least saturated point, just drag it down a little bit to make it darker. And with this, we've created a lot more contrast between these two, so between the leaf and the background. And for me, that's a really cool trick to just add a little bit more contrast when we have done all of our saturation and our color look here first. So with that little trick as well, we get from this, that was our color correction, to this now. I think it looks pretty good. The last two steps, and you might notice that we don't have as much masking going on here as we used to. That's because we've controlled pretty much all I wanted to do with this clip in the contrast in the beginning. So I don't want to add unnecessary uh, contrast everywhere, but I still wanted to do a little bit. So I want in the in node here, which is just a normal serial node, I want to add a circular mask and I'm just gonna drag it out a little bit like this and feather it out. If I could hit the red one, there we go. That looks perfect. And then I'm just going to see what I can do with the contrast here. I actually think I want to drag down the whites a little bit and drag up the blacks a little bit to give me some more room to work with. Now it looks flatter, but then if I give it a little bit of contrast here, I should be able to just make it pop ever so slightly and that might actually have been a little bit too little. So let's just see what we can do here. I just wanna kind of do it in the middle here as well. Something like this. Just trying to control and give it a little bit more color here without losing out on any of the contrast and also without getting it too bright because I also don't want that. Now for the out note, I'm just going to head back into my primaries and I'm just going to darken my background a little bit here. I actually want my whites or my highlights here to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to head into my waveform just to see what I can do. And these are the ones up here that we're looking at. So I want them to be a little bit better. So I'm just going to increase my gain ever so slightly like this. And because we have everything but the leaf selected, we pretty much leaves, no pun intended again, <laughs> leaves that alone. So I'm just gonna reduce the lift by one. And with this, we've created a lot more contrast here in the background as well. And we've still maintained and actually boosted the highlights a little bit up here, which I like because I just think it gives it a little bit more of a natural look. that We actually have more of a bright point up here. We didn't get that much here in the middle, but I think that's okay because it is still pretty dark uh, and we want the attention to be on the leaf. So if we drag these two notes down, this is our whole color grade from this to this. So if we went back here, I am going to just quickly make a few stills here. So this was before we did anything. This was with our color correction. And this was with our color grade on as well. And now we should be able to just turn this off and then be able to show us our different grades here. So we went from this flat look to this that looks a lot better just for our color correction. I think that is actually a pretty decent look just from what it is. And then we went a little bit further and created our look here. So we could turn these back on. And then we went from our color corrected look here to our color graded look. Now, if you prefer this look or this look, that's completely up to you. I think we still made it somewhat subtle that we added a lot of green and we boosted the reds or the oranges here, but this might be some too much for some, and this might be just what you wanted. 
this I think looks pretty natural to what it did in real life with a little bit added contrast, of course. And this is my preferred look because I just think it looks a lot better. That was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it told you a little bit about creating some depth and color contrast in your videos. And no matter what, I hope you enjoy if you have the footage pack already to grade along and to learn this way. I promise there will be a lot more videos coming as the grade along series progresses. And I'll also be adding more footage uh, soon in the future. Some cool clips that I've gotten recently that I want to include. Of course, if you already have the footage pack, this is included free of charge. And I probably won't increase the price, but you never know. So now is always a good time to get it if you're interested in grading along with me uh, like we are today. And also, if you have any suggestions on uh, kind of clips that you want to see me grade or different styles or anything, please leave them in the comments below because I'm always happy to improve or do something different from the suggestions that you guys come with. So with all that said, I'll just leave you here and until the next time, take care.